and I'm from Pushpatoha County, and I'm currently serving as one of the Southeast District Representatives on the Oklahoma State 4-H Leadership Council, and I'm also an Oklahoma State 4-H Innovator. And today, I'm going to be showing you how you can recycle a random object in your home to make a silo, and I'll also be reading you Grady's in the Silo. So, what is a silo? A silo is a grain bin that can be found on farms, ranches, or even near feed stores, and it holds thousands of pounds of feed and they can be used to mix the feed or to get feed from one spot to another. So, these random objects that you can make a silo out of can be anything that can be found in your home. You can use paper plates and a milk jug, and these I spray painted gray, although this is a styrofoam plate. Do not spray paint styrofoam because it will melt. You can also use tin foil and water bottles. This is just a simple water bottle that I had around, laying around my house and I wrapped it in tin foil. And then I made a top out of tin foil. You can also use the simplest object that I feel like most homes have and that is a can. And I just took the paper off the can and that's, you don't have to paint this one. And then I also use a tin foil again to make the top for it. And then you can use, this is, technique is a little bit more difficult, but you can use, these are popsicle sticks. Or if you had random sticks in your yard from your tree, you could probably get some of them and cut them about the same size. And these I took and laid out flat. So this would be like on a table. And you would lay them out as flat as you could get them. And I taped them. And then I took a round object. And after I had however many sticks I wanted, I leaned them up against my round object and hot glued the outside edges so they would stay together. And that's how I made it sturdier. And like I said, that's a little bit more difficult of one to make, but it does look really cool and does resemble the older wooden silos that used to be around before they had the fancy aluminum ones. Then I also made the top just out of a simple paper plate. And then one of the easiest ones you can do is you take a toilet paper roll, which is something, another object that everyone should have, or you could even use a paper towel roll. But right now, don't waste any paper towels or toilet paper just because we want to make a silo. Wait and use one and then actually recycle it. Then I also use, this time I use paper to make the top. And to make this top, you're simply going to take a piece of paper, and I've already cut this out, but you pick out your big sheet of paper, and you're going to lay a round object on it, you're going to take a marker, pencil, pen, whatever, and you're going to trace around it on top of your piece of paper. And then you would cut out your cut out your round circle. Then once you have your round circle, you're going to take a pair of scissors and you're going to cut as close as you can to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's paper. Nothing paper is perfect. And you're literally just going to twist it just like so. When you twist it, you would take a piece of tape and would tape it on top, tape it on bottom, and that would give you your little pointed roof shape. And if you want, before you cut it or before you tape it, if you want to use crayon or colored pencil, I would suggest doing that before you tape it. Or if you did like I did and I spray painted this one, I taped it first and then spray painted it. And now, once you have your silo complete, you can enjoy this book called Grady's in the Silo and learn how she gets stuck in the silo, which is what I'm fixing to read to you. This is written by Unabelle Townsend and illustrated by Bob Artley. So Grady's in the Silo. Interesting fact about this book is it is signed by the author. Bill rushed through the kitchen door. Call the vet. His wife Eileen looked up. Is it Grady? Yes, said Bill. As he reached for the telephone, it's cold outside and that stubborn wild cow is sick. We've put her in the little feed shed between the barn and the silo where she'll be warmer. I hope Doc can help her. Grady was one of Bill and Charlie Max's big red Hereford cows on the Mack farm in Yukon, Oklahoma. She enjoyed grazing in the green grass in the summer in the morning on munching on hay in the winter. However, she wasn't feeling very good at the moment. 
In a little while, Bill hurried out to greet the Doc as he drove up in his little black truck. Doc, I hope you can help Grady. She's a good cow and I'd like to see her well again, said Bill. Dr. Crump checked her over and told Bill that she'd soon be feeling better and decided to give her a shot. As soon as he did, Grady began looking for a way to leave. She had been cooped up in that shed long enough. She wanted out, and she wanted out now. Suddenly, Grady saw some light. She thought it led to outdoors. She took a big, quick leap. She would soon be glad to be free from all the humans fussing about her. But she had gone. She had a huge surprise awaiting for her. Instead of being free and outside in the pasture, Grady had jumped into a strange round building. She couldn't get out. She had jumped into the silo. Bill and Dr. Crump peered into the silo. How did she get in there, said Bill. I just turned around for a second and she raced past me and was gone. I don't know how she did it, said the vet, shaking his head. Why, that silo open is no larger, no bigger than a newspaper's page, and she must weigh 1,200 pounds. How could she squeeze through there? Now that she was inside the silo, Grady wanted out, and she began mooing loudly as Bill and Doc stood nearby watching her. Moo! Finally, Dr. Crump walked toward his truck. Bill, don't worry about her. She got herself into that silo, and she'll have to just get herself out. Keep her comfortable and make sure she has plenty of food and water. Meanwhile, Grady paced inside the silo. She was mad, tired, and confused. She just wanted to be free in the pasture, yet she was stuck, stuck in this huge, tall, gray silo. But how could she get out? That evening, Bill and Eileen still couldn't believe it. Grady continued mooing. Oh well, said Bill before going to bed. Doc seems to think that she'll get herself out tomorrow when she calms down. The next morning though, Bill could still hear Grady bellowing. The vet called to see if she had squeezed her way out yet. No, said Bill. In fact, she kept us up half the night with her bawling. How could they get her out, they all wondered. Early that same morning, some of Bill's friends, neighbors, and newspaper editor had heard about Grady. The editor of the Yukon Sun told other editors, and soon people from all over Oklahoma, as well as all over the world, knew about the Hereford in the silo. People began calling Bill to offer advice on how to rescue Grady. Some people suggest taking strong ropes and lifting her out from the top of the silo. Others said that the silo should be taken down piece by piece to save the cow. Both of these suggestions meant that Grady might be hurt if something fell on her. But Bill really liked his stubborn wild cow, and his silo was needed on the farm. He didn't want either one to be harmed or destroyed, but what could Bill do? Bill received many other ideas in letters and telegrams. He was told to get a helicopter and lift Grady out. Someone said to tunnel underneath the silo and drag her out. Both ideas seemed dangerous. Then Bill was told to fill the silo with water and float Grady to the top. How would they get her down when, from the top of the silo? Everyone wondered that. By the fourth day, Bill had received 770 telegrams from 45 states. People in Canada, Mexico, France, and Germany had contract, contacted him, too. Before long, thousands of letters from around the world poured in, and the phone calls were endless. The family couldn't get any sleep. The Yukon Sun's editor and the mayor were also flooded with phone calls. Anyone who couldn't talk to Bill called these men and attempted to tell them how to rescue Grady. Meanwhile, Grady was tired. She had roamed around in circles, munched hay, and drank some water. She had tried to tell Bill that she wanted out, but she was still stuck in the silo. It had been four long, miserable days for her, too. Then, a farm editor from the Denver Post, Ralph Patridge, called Bill. He said he wanted to fly to Yukon to get Grady out of the silo, and he knew just how to do it. 
When Ralph arrived, he immediately began preparing to rescue Grady. Bill, I think if Dr. Crump sedates her, we can rub a big bucket of grease on her and we can slip her out that tiny opening, he said. And that's just what happened. Early on the fifth morning, around 300 people showed up to see Grady. They watched as Bill, his brother Charlie, and some friends and neighbors tried to get Grady out. She, some men were in the silo pushing on Grady, who had been sedated and greased. Other men were outside the silo struggling to pull her out. All they had to do was push and pull. Pull, pull, pull. And then suddenly, Grady popped out. She was free. She had spent five days in a dark prison, and now she could see the sun, the pasture, and oh, what a beautiful morning it was. What a beautiful day in Yukon, Oklahoma. The end. Thank you all guys for listening. Goodbye.